tonight for a Savior who loves us not when we get ourselves together. Come on, anybody thankful for a Savior that doesn't love us when we get ourselves together, but just as we are. Man, I want to welcome you again to the six. There's no substitute for the presence of God. Amen. Just like that song sings, I want to encourage you, if you're new tonight, A, welcome home. And B, the gospel is really this good. And his church represents that where this is the kind of church where you belong before you behave like you should. I'm thankful for that. And you belong before you believe like you should. Anybody thankful that we serve a God in heaven who loves us as he finds us? Amen. Before you take your seats, I just want to encourage a couple of people. If you don't know who I am, my name is Josh. I have the honor of serving at Wave Church, the church, the local church that I believe is the hope of the world. And uh, I love this service. God is, is doing something special and unique in this service. And I saw WT earlier. I don't know where you're standing right now, over there somewhere. I saw hands. Where are you at, WT? Right there. Just want to encourage you, man. I, Holy Spirit put you on my heart in worship before you came and gave me a massive bear hug. Um, I'm not good at hugs, so thank you for that. I believe the Holy Spirit just want, wants to remind you, and I know you know this, but that you're called. You're called to ministry. You're marked by God. It's not just you, it's your family. You and your spouse, your family. You're marked by God. You are called. I want to encourage you to just remain faithful. And at, the, at God's perfect time, he opens the doors that need to be opened. The good news is when God do, opens the door, no man can shut it. But just to remind you, I'm not talking, this isn't about opportunity. I'm talking about divine doors that God will open. And you are called, you are called by God. The enemy loves to try to take our attention and make us question if we're called or not. No, you're marked by God. You are called. It's not just you, it's your wife, it's your family. You are called and you are marked by God. Anybody love WT's amazing family? Before you take your seats, we're going to read some Bible. Is that okay? If you're watching online tonight, um, we welcome you, all of our military uh, who are here and watching online. I know that I'm not the only one here that has friends that are currently serving overseas. And I know there's a lot of people here who have loved ones and family members who are serving overseas. We are so thankful for you. We honor you. If you're watching online tonight, our military, we honor you. We pray for you. You're part of this service tonight. Come on. Come on, Six. Can we honor? Thank you. Daniel chapter 3 says this. Can I read some Bible tonight? Is that okay? And then we're going to sit down, I promise. Can I read Bible? Is that all right? Just in case you're wondering what we believe in, it is the Bible. Amen. Daniel chapter 3 says this. Then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, weren't there three men that we tied up and threw into the fire? Some of you may know this story. They replied, certainly, your majesty. He said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fourth looks like a son of the gods. The title of my message tonight is Fire Festival. I had to. Is it too soon? It's never too soon. Can we pray? Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you for your presence tonight. Man, without your presence tonight would, would almost be a waste of time. But I thank you that you are here. God, I thank you that you've designed. Jesus, you have designed. Holy Spirit, you have orchestrated for every single one of us to be in this room this evening. We're not just here because it's a fun thing to do, although it is. We're here because we believe the local church is the hope of the world. We believe that you're the creator of the heavens and the earth. And we believe as we gather together that you meet us here. And I thank you that you're going to speak to every single one of us here tonight. I think that people are going to be healed tonight. Miracles are going to take place tonight. I think that there's people in this room and we don't yet know you personally. Tonight we're going to have the honor, the opportunity to respond to your grace and your love just as we are. Holy Spirit, I pray for your authority, your anointing, your power. Without it, I am nothing. And Jesus, 
You think that UVA is going to win the national championship? Whatever I said. Amen. Amen. You can take your seats. Thank you, team. You guys are amazing. Come on, somebody. Anybody love our creative team? <laughs> Sam and Loretta are here tonight. Would you mind, would you mind, is it okay if you would stand for just for a second? I want everybody to see who you are because I love you guys so much. Everybody see Sam and Loretta. Can you give them a huge, amazing hand? <laughs> you can tell. <laughs> they came up to me tonight and asked me if they were too old to be here. <laughs> to which my response was, no, you're too young. You need a couple more years and then, uh, but I just want to honor you and thank you for being here tonight at Young Adult Service. Please come whenever you want, and uh, you're an inspiration to me. You're pillars of faith in this house and, and in this church, and there's been, when there are seasons in my life where maybe I'm struggling, you are, you are one of the couples that I think of to remind me just to be faithful, to stay planted in God's house. I remember every Sunday, I would get here early on Sunday morning, I would already see you guys in your truck outside before church, long before church ever started. I want to thank you for the example that you've given me, and I believe so many in Wave Church. Thank you for being here tonight. And you were never too old to be in the six. Can I get an amen? I'm, I'm a, the type of individual where there's some things in my life where I just didn't grow up. Anybody like me? And I'm not talking about like puberty, although I was a late bloomer. Any late bloomers in the house tonight? There's three of us to, don't worry, things do happen. And like, I was, like, I, when I say, like, late bloomer, I was the type of guy in middle school, like, in the locker room where I would keep my arms down because I didn't have armpit hair yet. <laughs> there is, I have a friend who's on staff at Wave Church who one time was over at my house. I was in middle school. And he was making fun of me because he thought I shaved my armpits. And I let him make fun of me so that he thought that I shaved my armpits. The truth was, I just didn't have armpit hair yet. <laughs> so, fellas, there's hope. Now I can grow a mustache. So you do the math. There's some things in life that I just, I, I'm still, I'm just still a child. Like when I go to an aquarium, like I go to an aquarium. Like if I go to a city, I'm not just looking at like cool restaurants. I'm like, yo, do they have an aquarium? Or even better, do they have a zoo? I love, I love zoos. Anybody loves, it's just, it's okay if it's just me, I got no shame. I love, I love I love zoos. One of the things, and, and here's the thing, there's good zoos and there's bad zoos. D DC Zoo is okay. But like, we have, and that, I don't, that maybe they, they just offended a couple of people, but I don't think it's that great of a zoo. But the Norfolk Zoo, it's legit. <laughs> like, we got, a, we got a good zoo. And one of the things I love about going to a zoo is that I, I can pick and choose what exhibits I see. I love the Norfolk Zoo because as soon as you walk in, you turn left, and there's the monkey exhibit. I love monkeys. I think monkeys are awesome. For years of my childhood, I tried to convince my mom we needed a monkey for a pet. And am I the only person that, it's okay if I'm the only person that's passionate about zoos. Every, I love just going to the different exhibits. I love going to the lion exhibit. I love going to the tiger exhibit. I mean, I grew up with the tiger, Alyssa, but I love seeing, like, she's not here, so I can... Like seeing a tiger like up close and per like some people are like, oh, that's cool. I'm like, that's a tiger like right there and it's swimming. I, I love, here's, here's the reason why I love, I love zoos because, because when, I, when I purchase my ticket, they, they don't tell me and they don't require of me to visit every exhibit. That's important to me because there is one exhibit I will refuse to visit. And that is the reptile exhibit. Now, it's for one specific reason. I don't have a problem with snakes. I'm okay with snakes. I can handle snakes. I can deal with snakes. I'm good with lizards. I'm good with chame chameleons. are awesome. I'm good with, with all that stuff. But here's, here's the thing. If, if my family was being attacked by snakes, I feel like I could defend my family. But if my family was being attacked by some spiders, I don't know. And I'm cautious to talk about this because every time I do, people think it's kind of funny. And they're like, oh, Josh is scared of spiders. Let's get a spider and put it close to him. I'll cut you. 
You think I'm, like, you think I'm joking? Like, th this isn't humor. I will cut you. <laughs> I, I, I am terrified of spiders. Brooke kills all of the bugs and spiders in our home. But if an anaconda shows up, I'm your man. I refuse to visit the reptile exhibit. That's why I love zoos. If, if zoos required for me to visit the reptile exhibit, I wouldn't go. I, I, love, I love zoos. The, the, the problem with this is when I translate it to my Christian life is, is sometimes I want my Christian life to be like a zoo. And when I give my life to Jesus, I, 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 I want it to be where I can visit the exhibits that I want to visit but the exhibit of struggle and the exhibit of, of trial and tribulation, the exhibit of fire, I don't want anything to do with it. The problem with that is, is, is God's word never promises an easy life. But God's word does promise that now I have the grace to walk into the fire, to walk with the fire, and to walk through the fire. Come on somebody, I need you to help me preach a little bit tonight. And I want to suggest to you and I tonight that as we follow Jesus, sometimes that means following Jesus leads me right to the fire. I want to suggest to you and I tonight that as you and I, we bow our lives before Jesus, the moment we do so, we become a threat to the enemy. Turn your neighbor and say, fire festival. I don't know if you're familiar with the story of Daniel chapter 3, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego with King Nebuchadnezzar. If you are not, I'll take a moment to quickly refresh your memory. I don't know if you know anybody that is like super into themselves, like way too into themselves, like makes up stuff about themselves that is just so outlandish, you know it's not true. Yeah. It's like, we know you didn't go to the moon because you're not Neil Armstrong, so stop saying you went to the moon. Anybody know? Maybe, maybe the person sitting next to you right now. Somebody in the Bible that was like this, his name is King Nebuchadnezzar. He was so into himself, he had a statue, an idol built for people to worship of him. And he declared to the city, to the nation, when he plays the music, even though you may worship other gods when I play music. I mean, imagine this. Imagine this that you are required when, when music is played across the land that you have to bow and worship this idol. If you don't, you'll die. You'll be thrown in, into a furnace. So the, it, the, they play the music and everybody begins to bow except for three young Hebrew boys that would only bow to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The King Nebuchadnezzar's advisors find out about this and they bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to King Nebuchadnezzar. King Nebuchadnezzar summons them because he hears about what they're doing. He says, I heard you three would not bow to my idol. He said, no, we won't. He said, okay, I'm going to give you another opportunity to compromise. And now they can see the furnace. They can see the consequence of living by their conviction instead of convenience. He gives them another opportunity to compromise. He said, all you got to do is bow. Yet they refuse to bow. They say something so powerful that we're going to talk a little bit later. And they, you know how the story goes. They are thrown into the furnace. The furnace is so hot. It's turned up seven times hotter. It's so hot that the three guards that took them to the fire all died before they even got there. It was so hot. They go into the furnace. We just read King Nebuchadnezzar looks in. And they're not burning. They're not screaming. And there's no longer just three men in the furnace, but now there's four. And King Nebuchadnezzar says, who's not a believer, but says specifically there's a fourth man who looks like the son of God. Orders them out of the furnace. King Nebuchadnezzar now begins to believe in their God. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are promoted. There's three things I want to pull out of this scripture tonight that I believe is for you and for me, if I'm being honest, I was trying my best to avoid preaching about this tonight. But I was, as I was trying to even look at other messages that I've preached before, I was trying to maybe think of something different, the Holy Spirit kept bringing me back to this story. Number one is this, I believe this is for somebody here tonight, is God gave you friends 
for the fire. Before we look at the obvious, most powerful point of this story, that Jesus is in this fire. I think Jesus wants to remind you and I tonight, I gave you friends for the fire. I think sometimes Jesus comes into our fire situation and says, I'm here, but why are you by yourself? He gave you friends for the fire. We'll read it again in verse 19. We actually haven't read this yet. It says, then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, all three. His attitude toward them changed. He ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the furnace. So these men wearing their robes, trousers, turbans, and other clothes, they're off-white and Nike, were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. The king's command was so urgent and the furnace was so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took up, watch this, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, all three. And these three men firmly tied fell into the blazing furnace. I, I love that in every part of this story, they are together. Like I imagine this story, and it's Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and I, I, I try to imagine how this went down. The music plays, and there is the three homies together. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And I can almost imagine, like, like if I'm in the story, I'm in the story, and maybe I'm Meshach, and I'm like, yo, Shadrach, Abednego, like, do we really want to do this? <laughs> like he said, we'll die. And I can I imagine Shadrach's like, yo, we're going to do this. We said we're going to live by faith. We said we're going to live by conviction. So we're going to do this together. And I'd be like, yo, but if we just untied our shoes, and when the music played, we could just tie our shoes, and it looked like we were bowing. And it's like, God, you know, we're not bowing to that. It's just we're tying our shoes. And Abednego's like, no, Josh, we're going to do this. They're summoned to King Nebuchadnezzar. It's getting more real. And the Bible says again, all three of them were there. I love that in every point in this story, it's Shadrach, it's Meshach, and Abednego. It's all three. They stand before the king. They stand before the enemy together. They refuse to compromise again together. They walk into the fire together. They stand in the fire together. They walk out of the fire together. They're promoted together. God gave you friends for the fire. I wonder if they weren't together, if this story would have looked different. I wonder in, in some of those moments if Shadrach didn't have a bendigo to stir his faith again. He said, dude, I don't know. I don't know if we're going to do this. No, we will. We're going to do this. I wonder if they weren't together, would this story look different? Can I get an amen? amen. A couple of years ago, I was reminded of this powerful truth. There are things in my life that Joe Riddle has caused me to do that I am not thankful for. All of them have to do with exercise. We did a go ruck a couple of years ago. I don't have time to explain. Just go Google it yourself later and enjoy. Long story short, it's just 12 hours of hell. It's like, what, over 20 miles of hiking with... 45 pounds of weight, 35, but it felt like 45, and, and you're doing all these workouts, you're carrying logs, and it's awful. I don't enjoy that. Anybody relate to me? Oh, you're all super duper awesome, are you? <laughs> and I was doing okay until we got to the water. And we had to do something called hydro burpees, water burpees. If you don't know what a burpee is, you jump on the ground, and you have to get back up again. You do enough of them, and they're really not fun. <laughs> you do them in the water, that's a little harder. Now, here's the thing. It would have been, it, it, it been enjoyable almost if it was the summertime, but it wasn't. So the water was freezing. I don't like cold water. I like hot tubs. <laughs> and so I remember they got us in the line, and Luke and Dave, if you could help me with this illustration. This is one of those cool illustrations where th they were actually the two guys standing next to me in the water and they had us link arms like this and you know we're about the water's like about to belly button area so we're just we're pretty cold I can feel how cold it is but it's a whole nother level when your face goes under the water how many people know what I'm talking about and like all right we're gonna count these these water burpees I'm like man I, I don't know about this and Luke and Davey are just Captain Awesome they're like Josh we got this I'm like, dude, I don't know if we got this. They're like, one, and down we go. And it's, Ugh! you know that when you, you lose air, it's so cold, you're trying to, you know, you're sucking in air. 
It's like, man, I don't know if we got this too. We go down again, and Davy and Luke are forcing me, drowning me under the water. I'm like, Davy, I tried to tell you, dude, we don't got this. He's like, Josh, shoot three, D- down again. I don't have this. And I remember Luke was like, dude, just pretend it's like baptism. Four, and we down again. I was like, man, I'm identifying with the death of Jesus, but not the resurrection of Jesus and baptism. Five, and we go down again. Six, and we go down again. The only reason I finished these water burpees is, God, I had a friend on my left and a friend on my right who were stronger and bigger than I was. And every time we'd go down, I realized that I could do it, but I could do it if I had friends on my side. And I came to tell somebody tonight that God gave you friends for the fire. To link arms with you. When you, feel, when you feel like you're not strong enough to stand by yourself, you got a friend on your left and a friend on your right to pick you up. I'm going to stay linked here. I'm comfortable here. I feel safe. Too. Come on. Thank Luke and Dave for helping me tonight. God gave you friends for the fire. The type of friends when you fall, they don't point and laugh, but they pick you up again. The type of friends that in seasons when you have no strength, they are your strength. The type of friends that see that you're about to walk through a fire and they let you know, I'm not going to leave you hanging. I'm going to walk with you through that fire. I'm going to stand with you in the fire and I'm going to walk with you out of the fire. I know this to be true because those two friends that just helped me with this illustration, there's been seasons of my life where they are the only reason I'm still standing here. We gotta be careful not to begin to think that community groups is just like a church thing. Community groups is a friends for the fire thing. Maybe you're here tonight, you're like, man, I don't have those type of friends. Friend, that's why God created the church. That's why God created community groups. We can begin to do life and rub shoulders with people that become friends and friends that become family. We begin to link arms. God gave you friends for the fire. Friend, if you don't have those type of friends, stay planted in God's house. And here's the thing, it doesn't just happen. We didn't just become really good friends. It takes work. It takes forgiveness. You don't have to leave this place tonight. Alone. Can I get an amen? Number two, there is another man in the fire. Verse 24, then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet, we read this already, in amazement and asked his advisors, weren't there three men that we tied up and threw into the fire? They replied, certainly, your majesty. He said, look, I see four men. Imagine this. This king just sent three men into a furnace to die. And he looks in, and instead of seeing three burning men, he sees four men standing there walking. Weren't there three men that we tied and threw to the fire? Replied, certainly. He said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fourth looks like the son of the gods. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego remind you and I tonight that there is a fourth man in the fire. That's when you, that when you walk into seasons that feel like the enemy has turned the furnace seven times hotter, that not only has God given you friends for the fire, but when you are in a season of hell, that Jesus Christ is, is with you. Now, if this is true and we believe this, it has a powerful implication for our lives. I, I didn't realize this. I, was telling, I think I was telling Joe and Jared about this in the green room. I didn't realize this because I'm a little slower than they are. I didn't realize this until this week when I was reading this verse. King Nebuchadnezzar says this, I see four men walking in the furnace. The Bible doesn't say that King Nebuchadnezzar said that, hey, there's three guys screaming and shouting and, and, and trying to sprint and run and strive out of the fire, and then there's a fourth man back there like trying to help them out. Said, so, no, there, there's four men, and they're, they're, walk, they're walking. They're walking 
in the, like, my imagination is, it's almost like, it, I'm like, they're, they're playing Uno in there. You know what I mean? Like, th they're walking. Can you imagine playing Uno with Jesus, hit him with a reverse, hit you with a double reverse? Hit him with a draw four, hit you with a draw, John 3, 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego remind me that if Jesus is in my fire, even though in the natural I should feel turmoil, I should be depressed, I should feel anxious, I should be filled with fear. If Jesus is in my fire, then the Prince of Peace is in my fire. And if Jesus is in my fire, then I can find peace in the fire. And I don't have to strive, I don't have to run, but I can walk in the fire. And if Jesus is in my fire, I can find joy in the fire. I can find purpose. I can find purpose in the fire. They were walking. Jesus steps into your situation and in a circumstance where you should be filled with anxiety, you can find rest in the fire. Number three, and this is what I would love to make very clear, as odd as this point may be, for you and for me, if you call Wave Church, you call the six your home, I want to make this clear for us, because we are not here we're not here just to be a cool service. We're not here just to meet once a month and be in a community group because it's a cool church thing to do. We're here because there's a heaven and there's a hell. And there's a God who's already won and there's a, a devil who's already lost. But there's an enemy who's trying to do everything that he can to stop what God is doing through Wave Church. Can I get an Amen. Number three is this, the enemy should know your name. The enemy should know your name. Verse 13, furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summons Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king. And Nebuchadnezzar said to them, is it true, now watch what he says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The enemy knew their name, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up. The enemy found out quickly who Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were because they became a threat. I grew up playing soccer, and this story I'm about to share with you is going to sound like I'm humble bragging, but you need to understand something is it's not, and I just need you to let me have my moment. Is that okay? I grew up playing soccer, and I went to First Colonial High School, the greatest high school in Hampton Roads. And every year, we would play Cox High School. Now, again, just to give context and just let you know I'm not humble bragging, every time we played Cox High School, we lost. Every time we played Cox High School, I never scored a goal. Okay, context. But something happened in this game never happened before, it's never happened since, but it happened. We're playing Cox High School, and we're losing. And somebody passes me the ball, and I hear, it's never happened to me, except for this one time, I hear this defender say, hey, that's Josh Kelly, don't let him shoot. Does it matter that when I shot the ball, I missed by like 45 feet, maybe. Does it matter that we lost four to one? Maybe. But they knew who I was. The enemy thought that I was a threat. I'll never forget it. He knows my name. I wonder tonight, does the enemy know your name? Does he know your name? Why did King Nebuchadnezzar know who Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were? Because they refused to bow to the world and they would only bow to who Jesus is. May I remind you tonight what I wanted to suggest in the beginning of tonight's conversation is the moment that we bow to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, you become an enemy to our enemy. 
you become a threat to the enemy. The moment that you bow to Jesus, there is a target on your back. The good news is, is that the enemy we're talking about, Satan, the devil, has already lost. We serve a God who has already won. Can I get an amen? Do you believe that tonight? It is important we understand the devil is a defeated sore loser. We need to understand that. And he understands this, so he's, this is what he tries to do. It's to now entice Christians to bow to anything but Jesus. I found the issue is, at least for me personally, is I like to bow to Jesus with certain areas of my life. But there's some other areas of my life I like to pretend like I'm tying my shoe. Maybe when we first made that decision, Jesus, I surrender everything. But I've found the world gives, gives us opportunities to, sur to compromise our bow every single day. The result is a bunch of Christians that the enemy is not concerned with. The result is, is a bunch of Christians who are not on a first name basis with the enemy. I know this sounds interesting and weird. But I wonder tonight, does the enemy know your name? I wonder collectively, are we a threat to the enemy? I wonder tonight, I would, I would like us to think about this, is what are you bowing to other than Jesus? What if you begin to compromise? And for a while, you can, you can hide it and keep it to yourself. But we've given the enemy a foothold into our life. I wonder, think about this. If you're taking notes, write this down. Maybe even think about it later tonight and this week. What if you begin to bow to? I want to finish with this. Is that okay? You still with me? Can I get an amen? There's one statement the enemy has no uno reverse for. There's one statement in this story the enemy has no power for. In fact, this statement and this type of faith terrifies the enemy. And it reminds him just how defeated he is. And it is this, even if. It is an even if Christian. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they say something that is so challenging to me. Because as they're brought before... King Nebuchadnezzar, they're brought before the enemy, and they can see the furnace that they're about to be thrown into. And the king says to them, are, are you going to bow to my idol, or are you going to go into the furnace? And, and if, if you go into the furnace, who's going to save you then? And they say this statement that, that is so challenging to me. They say, King, even if our God, who we will only bow to, even if he doesn't rescue us in the natural, we still won't bow to your idol. We will only bow to the name of Jesus. Can I get an amen? Even if we don't walk out of this fire in the natural, even if we won't bow to your idol, we will only bow to Jesus. You know what? You know what this city needs? You know what this nation needs? What the world needs is some even if Christians. Say, Jesus, we're here to follow you, to build your church. And even if it means we got to go to an exhibit that is uncomfortable, even if it means my reputation may change, even if it means it's going to be a little bit more inconvenient, even if it means why the world is bowing and I'm one of the few that is standing, Jesus, I refuse to bow to anything but for who you are. But Hampton Roads needs is not a perfect church, not a cool church. It needs some even if Christians church. Even if I don't get the promotion when I thought I would and I was really praying for it and I was fasting for it. Even if you don't show up when I thought that you would. Even if I don't feel you in this season. Even if you don't heal me. Even if you don't move in that loved one's life that I've been praying for, in the way that I thought that you would, even if, even if you don't, God, I refuse to bow, I refuse to, bow to the world. And I will only bow to you, God, you are still God. I pray, I pray, as odd as this sounds, that the enemy knows my first, middle, and last name. I pray that the six, that Wave Church is at the top 
of the enemy's to-do list. Because he knows if he's going to do anything in Hampton Roads, he's got to get through Wave Church. He's got to get through the six first. Not because we're perfect. Because there's some people who refuse to bow to the world. Only going to bow to Jesus. And then I believe we really become a threat to what the enemy is trying, the losing enemy is trying to do. Because we serve a God, we serve a God who not only knows our name. Catch this tonight, I want you to catch this. Because we serve a God who not only knows our name, but gave his life so that we could know his. I want to finish with this. Sarah mentioned earlier that we were in Israel. And the first trip I went to Israel on, Joe Riddle made me aware of something I didn't know, which is usually what happens. Of a quote of a man that was fighting for his nation before it even existed. And the Holy Spirit reminded me of this, Joe, I believe for tonight, and I believe for this ministry. I said it before, Paul DeYoung prophesied over our church that we're going to see God do things the next five years far greater than we've seen in the first 20 collectively. And I believe in all of my heart that one of the major reasons that's going to take place is because of what God does in this ministry. The young adults, the young families of Wave Church. And as we talk about becoming a dangerous church, dangerous in the context of our enemy, I was reminded of this. His name is Joseph Truppledore. Now keep in mind, they are fighting this war for land and a nation that for them doesn't exist yet. It's for Israel. As they're fighting, if I'm not mistaken, Israel at this point does not exist on the map. And Joseph says this to one of his brother in arms. I'm going to read this quote and then I'm going to give you the JK remix. Is that okay? Is that okay? He says this. I think it's profound. We need men and women who are ready for everything. Everything that the land of Israel will demand. A generation that will have no private interests or habits, but be like a simple iron bar, which can be shaped to anything that is needed for the national machine. Is a wheel missing? I am that wheel. Do we lack a nail, a screw, a flywheel? Take me. Must we dig? I am that spade. We need a soldier? I am that soldier. Policeman, doctor, lawyer, fireman? Take me. I will do everything. I have no faith, no philosophy, no feelings. I don't even have a name. I am the pure ideal of service prepared for anything. I am bound by no limits. I know only one command to build. But, I said to Trumpledore, there are no people like this. So he says this to his buddy, and his buddy responds, said, that sounds great, but there's no people like this. And Trumpledore's response is this, there shall be. I want to read it like this tonight, and I believe this is for us. Because we're not here for a comfortable, convenient Christianity that is okay with being in our little Christian bubble. While we sit here tonight, there's 1.7 million people in Hampton Roads that don't yet know the gospel, the good news, the grace, the love of Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? I want you to get this in your spirit tonight. We need men and women who are ready for everything. Everything that our God will demand. A generation that will have no private interests or habits, but be like a simple iron bar which can be shaped to anything that is needed for his kingdom purpose. Is a wheel missing? I am that wheel. Do we like a nail, a screw, a flywheel? Take me. Must we dig? I am that spade. We need a soldier? I am that soldier. Host team, door holder, worship leader, choir singer, bathroom cleaner, parking lot attendant. Take me. I will do everything. I will have outrageous faith. My philosophy is Jesus. I don't live by my feelings, but I live by conviction. I have a name, and it is a child of God. I am the pure ideal of service, prepared for anything. 
I am bound by no limits through his grace. I know only one command, to build the church, the church that is the hope of the world. Even if it costs me everything, I will give more. And while the world may say there's no people like that, the six will respond, there shall be. There shall be. The Holy Spirit has already shown me what this auditorium is going to look like not too long from now. But it's not going to happen from convenient, comfortable Christianity. It's not going to be ha happen by compromising the culture that we live in. It's going to happen to followers of Jesus who are far from perfect, but we refuse to bow but anything but Jesus. I wonder if you're in this place tonight, we're out of, town, out of time. And it's a season for you where it feels like the enemy, it's not just a fire, but it feels like the enemy has turned the furnace seven times hotter. The good news is, is the hotter the enemy turns, the more glory your God gets. But it's been that season for you. I want to pray for you. I believe the Holy Spirit of God is here tonight. He's going to encourage you and, st and strengthen you and reveal to you and remind you that he's there with you. And dare I say that the spirit of even if, even if you don't walk out of the fire the way that you thought that you would, God, you are still God. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I wonder if that's you in this place. With every head bowed and every eye closed. If, it, if it's that season for you, would you mind just lifting your hands so I know who I'm going to pray for tonight? number of hands going up. If you wouldn't mind just keeping your hands raised. Holy Spirit of God, we thank you for your presence. There it is. God, your word didn't promise us easy, but it does promise your grace. I pray tonight and every season, every circumstance and situation and story that is represented tonight that there would be a fresh sense God of who you are that we could find rest in the fire we've been striving and running and we can begin to walk that you begin to align friendships that we can begin to link arms with Holy Spirit that you begin to show the light where it has seemed so dark There it is, friend. Burdens begin to go. Weights begin to be lifted. I believe people are going to leave this service feeling lighter. And where faith has been flagging, it will be reignited again. In Jesus' name, you can put your hands down. If you believe it, can we give God? Come on, can we thank Jesus? Can we thank God in this place?